Hello again, this is a video on cyclotrons. Uh, cyclotrons are a, uh, an application in uh, Year 12 Physics, South Australia. Charged particles in electric fields. What is an electric field? Well, an electric field is actually created by uh, a potential difference, a large potential difference usually, is something that we can... So if we have uh, two plates, two conducting plates, and we put a potential difference across them then we'll have an electric field associated between them and I should actually draw it from one side to the other all the way so the green is our electric field and it has a direction and how do we tell the direction? Well, we've put a small positive test charge in that field. So there's our small positive test charge. Which way is it going to go? It's going to go towards the negative plate. And so I can draw in my direction, of the, or the direction of my electric field there. Okay. So this is great because we can accelerate charge particles to very high velocities with uh, with these devices called cyclotrons. Here we have a positive proton and if we put it into an electric field we can accelerate it to some high speed V but we don't want to do that in uh, in a straight line because that would take a lot of uh, a large uh, area. If we do it in a cir circular pattern as in uh, this is a, an overhead view of a cyclotron unit here, then we can do it so that they accelerate in circles or they, they gain speed in circles and eventually get fired out at some target. Why do we want to accelerate charged particles or particles? Well, because we like to fire them at things so that we can make them radioactive or radi radioisotopes. Uh, that em give off radioactive emanations and then we can put those in people and we can put them inside somebody uh, depending on what the element is uh, the element can be uh, taken up by the body and, and, and sent to different parts of the body where it's being used in, in metabolism and that sort of thing and, and then we can put this person in a, in a machine that can measure the radioactive emanations and these things have um, these sorts of things are used by hospitals obviously uh, they have very short half lives so they don't have much effect on the uh, on the cells in the in the person's body rather they just they just sort of pass through and uh, and and get picked up by this machine to show images of, it, of inside the body uh, it can be used for diagnosis and for treatment in fact uh, so cyclotrons, uh, where, how do electric fields come into cyclotrons? Well, we have, um, I'll just get rid of this here, and we can see, oh, I'm going to take that whole picture out, that's okay. These two things are the Ds draw that in black, I'll continue that line, I shouldn't have done that. We call them D's because they're kind of D shaped, or this one is anyway. And they're, they're essentially copper electrodes. About the, uh, the original, uh, uh, original built cyclotrons in the 1930s by Ernest Lawrence and Stanley Livingston were about the size of a, of about as tall as a man. So. Um, these machines aren't very big at all um, and, and these are big copper electrodes and we have an alternating potential difference here okay so which means that we have one side is uh, positive one minute and negative another okay it's it's alternating constantly changing and it's changing in time with this particle which is turning around inside the D's why does it turn well, there's a, there's a magnetic field, and, and we'll talk about that in a later video. Uh, the chamber that all of this is contained in is evacuated, and it's evacuated so that as that, 
as that particle, that charged particle rotates around, it doesn't collide with other particles in, in, in the air or in, a, in whatever gas is inside there and, and hence lose kinetic energy. Why does it accelerate? Well, there's an electric field caused by this, this potential difference between the Ds. There's no electric field inside the Ds. The Ds are actually hollow conductors, something like this. Something like that. Copper. And, and this charged particle moves around inside there getting a larger and larger radius as it gains speed uh, hollow conductors uh, there's no electric field inside a hollow conductor so um, which is good um, because we don't want the we don't want the speed to increase as it's turning around in a circle what happens is as it as it comes around, as it comes around here, it goes in a circle because of the magnetic field. It hits the electric field and accelerates. Turns around, accelerates. Turns around, accelerates. Every time it goes between the Ds here, it accelerates or changes speed. Uh, okay. So, uh, and and so, yeah. Okay. So we've talked about the target. How do we get the uh, how do we get the proton? Uh, that ion source in the centre that I rubbed out that diagram. There's an ion source, which is just a, a hot filament. And what ion sources or hot filaments tend to do is they they liberate electrons. So there might be an electron come off here, or there'll be lots of them, of course. Those electrons collide with other particles in the gas, uh, the gas around this ion source, and uh, and and essentially turn some of that gas, if it's hydrogen, knock off its electrons so that it's just a, a hydrogen nucleus or a proton. And and so this is our this is our ion here, this proton. Uh, and and the filament is our ion source because of the liberated electrons. So here's a picture of the proton. Is that proton here? Positive proton accelerating in the electric field. I'll just make because I've been drawing the electric field green. I'll do that again. Green electric field between the two Ds not inside the Ds. Has a positive side and a negative side. This is our positive at the moment, this is our negative. Remember that it's an alternating uh, potential difference so um, it changes and, and the next two diagrams the next two diagrams will show that in a second. So, uh, so the positive proton accelerates towards the negative D then it turns around in a circle with a radius, no electric field. Then right at this moment here, or somewhere in here, the potential difference changes. And we'll come over to this diagram, and all of a sudden this D here is now positive, and this one is negative, and the proton accelerates again towards the negative, turns around in this way. The alternating current, alternating potential difference changes. This side's positive, this side's negative. The proton accelerates across that electric field again. And uh, we'll talk about uh, why the radius gets larger as, as the speed of the particle increases. That You might think that's intuitive. It, I guess it is. So, And we'll talk about that in a later video. Thanks for watching.